And his name is Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan, whose name is Sakhr ibn Harb, ibn Umayyah, ibn Abd Shams, ibn Abd Manaf. And Muawiyah radiallahu anhu, even though he's one of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was subject later on to much criticism and many lies were fabricated against him radiallahu anhu. So let's see what the scholars themselves and what some of the tabi'een said about Muawiyah radiallahu anhu. One of the greatest scholars in Islam, his name is Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak. He was a mirum mu'minin in hadith. He was a scholar. Someone asked him. The Khalifa Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz is from the Tabi'een, and he put a lot of good in the Muslim empire. Is Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, is he better than Muawiyah? Abdullah ibn Mubarak, he said no. From the aqidah of the people of the Sunnah is that they believe that the dust that was accumulated in the nostrils of Muawiyah while he was with the Nabi is greater than Umar ibn Abdul Aziz and his whole life. Because that one is a companion and that one is from the Tabi'een. A man said to Abu Zuhra al-Razi, I hate Muawiyah. So he said to him, why? And the man replied, because he fought against Ali. So he said to him, woe to you. Indeed, Muawiyah's Lord is merciful. And his disputant, who is Ali, is noble. So what is your reason for entering between them? May Allah be pleased with them both. He's telling him, it's not really your concern. This is something that happened many years ago. And both of them made their ijtihad and both believed they were right. Why are you putting yourself into this? Saying, I hate one and I like the other. Although he used to say clearly to the community, Ali radiallahu anhu is more superior than me. Ali is better than I am because he was an individual who used to take the kalam of Allah and the kalam of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam and make it big in his eyes and in his heart. From the dua of the Nabi for Muawiyah, he used to say, Oh Allah, make Muawiyah someone who people are guided by. Why don't they take that authentic hadith? Who is this man, Muawiyah? He's Muawiyah, the son of Abu Sufyan. So his father was a companion and he was a serious personality in Al Islam. So he raised his boy Muawiyah up to be the leader of the people which he became. He fought against the Muslims in the beginning, in Badr, in Uhud. But on the day of the days of Al Hudaybiyah, he embraced Islam and this man kept his Islam quiet. He was afraid of his father, he was afraid of the chiefs of Quraysh and what his Islam would do in terms of bringing down the honor of the father. So the most important characteristic and virtue of Muawiyah, he was a companion. No matter what a person does, no matter who he is and what he accomplishes in this dunya, he can't do enough. Whatever he does, the magnitude of that action, that ibadah, that sacrifice, can never and will never reach the level of what it was just to be a companion that alone surpasses any and everything everyone else can do after the companions. From his virtues, radiallahu anhum ajma'een, is that he was one of the writers of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Did he write down the Qur'an? Some said no. Whether he wrote the Qur'an or not, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would never choose an individual to write letters to people who needed those letters. Never would he choose an individual except that he was a person who was from the umana. He was trustworthy. Or why else would the Nabi who was Hakim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam choose him? Muawiyah radiallahu anhu narrated over a hundred of the hadith of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Again, that alone is a virtue. When you think about people like Umar and you think about people like Khalid ibn Walid, you think about people like his father Abu Sufyan, Muawiyah radiallahu anhu was on par with them in terms of his bravery. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wanted Muawiyah to write something for him. He sent his messenger to go to Muawiyah to tell him, come, the Nabi wants you. He said, you go back and you tell Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that I'm eating. The messenger went and told the Nabi what happened. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made a dua against Muawiyah. He said, may Allah not cause his stomach to be full. 
That's an authentic hadith in Sahih Muslim. So the people take that hadith and say that you Muslims, you respect Sahih Muslim. This hadith is there. How do you understand it? The way we understand that authentic hadith is not one way, but multiple ways. The Arabs used to say things that they didn't really mean. And the Nabi used to say that things that they really didn't mean. Another understanding, Ikhwani, is just as important. There was a little girl who was an orphan staying with Umm Sulaim. The Nabi saw the little girl and said, I haven't seen you in a long time. Where have you been? I've been around, Ya Rasulullah. The Prophet said and made a dua against the little girl. And he said, may you not become old. When the little girl heard that, she became disturbed. She went to Umm Sulaim crying. Rasulullah made dua against me that Allah doesn't cause me to grow up and become an old person. Umm Sulaim put her clothes on and went to the Nabi and said, Ya Rasulullah, why did you do that to my Yatima? Why did you do that? The Prophet started laughing. He said, Umm Sulaim, don't you know? Don't you know that I made a condition with my Lord that any Muslim that I make dua against them and they don't deserve it, then I asked Allah to make it an ajr, a thawab, a barakah with Allah if he doesn't deserve it. So an Imam Muslim, he brought the hadith of the little girl. And then after the hadith of the little girl, he brought the hadith of Muawiyah. May Allah not fill up his stomach, showing that's what he understood. Doing the khilaf of Umar radiallahu anhu, sent Muawiyah to Sham to be in charge of the people of Sham. All of those years, during the Khilaf of Umar, 12, 13 years, the golden age of Al-Islam. Umar was pleased with him, he died. Uthman came and left him there. And then Uthman was subsequently killed, and then the drama and the fitness started. So the point here is, the Nabi died and he was pleased with him. Abu Bakr died and he was pleased with him. Umar and Uthman chose him to be a leader of the Muslims to take care of their affairs. So now we'll discuss the Khilafah of Muawiyah And when Muawiyah becomes the Khalifa, he gives a speech saying, O oh people, I am not the best of you. Those who are better than me include Abdullah ibn Umar and other excellent men. But it may be that I am the one who will be the most useful in ruling for you and the most harmful of you to your enemy and the one to give you the most abundance. So now that Muawiyah has become the Khalifa, because at the time of Uthman, the Muslims had reached as far as China. But when the fitna happened, many of the land started to be lost by the Muslims. So Muawiyah anhu started again to regain those lands. And he sent an army to conquer Amuriya, what is today Ankara. So then Muawiyah prepares an army towards to go to Constantinople, Constantinia. The Prophet ﷺ had promised in a hadith, Prophet ﷺ said, you will conquer Constantinople and you will conquer Rome. And the Muslims have conquered Constantinople. And we're still awaiting the promise of the Prophet ﷺ to conquer Rome. So one of the companions said, O Messenger of Allah, which of the two cities will be conquered first? And the Prophet ﷺ said, the city of Heraclius al Constantinia. So meaning, Rome is on the way. And the Prophet ﷺ had said in the hadith, the first army to attack Constantinople will be forgiven. So you can imagine now, everyone wants to be part of this army. So an army was prepared under the leadership of Busr ibn Arta'a in the 50th year after the Hijrah. Two armies, an army that went by land and another by sea. And the attack began and Busr started to send for reinforcements. So Mu'awiyah sent an army at the head of which was Yazid ibn Mu'awiyah. And he took part in that army that was forgiven. And amongst the soldiers in this army are Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, the companion, who is over 80 years old, and Abdullah ibn Umar, and Abdullah ibn Zubair, and Abdullah ibn Abbas, and other Sahaba. All of them wanted this great honor of being a part of the army that the Prophet ﷺ said they will be forgiven. And that's why everyone goes out. But it was the world's best defended city, and the Muslims could not enter it. And they stayed there until winter. And then snow fell, and the Sahaba were not used to that, so they decided to withdraw. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees that Abu Ayyub al-Ansari dies at this time. So he says, carry me and bring me as soon as you can to Constantinople, and bury me as close to it as possible. So Busr ibn Arta'a commanded a regiment to wear heavy armor, and carry the body of Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, and they carried him as close as they could, and the Romans were shooting arrows at them. 
and it became very difficult, they stopped and they dug a grave and they buried Abu Ayyub al-Ansari radiallahu anhu there. And his grave is known until today in Istanbul. And in the 53rd year after the Hijrah, Muawiyah anhu sent another group to Constantinople. And it took four years and it still wasn't conquered. And then Tunisia is conquered in that same year in al qairawan which is close to Morocco. And during his reign also a Sudan was conquered. And they also conquered Bukhara and Sindh. And all this time during his reign, al Khawarij are still continuing with their fitan. But not a single Sahabi ever at any point joins the Khawarij. And this is proof that they were not upon the truth. So they started to gather and revolt. Every time one of the leaders of the Khawarij will surface, Mu'awiyah sent them an army and they would destroy them. In the 49th year after the Hijrah, Mu'awiyah had built roads and places of knowledge. And in the same year, Al-Hassan ibn Ali passes away at the age of 47. And there are some people fabricate and say that Mu'awiyah anhu poisoned him. But the question would be, why would he have to wait nine years in order to poison him? He would have done it much sooner. And he himself left and abdicated for Mu'awiyah. The scholars generally agreed that Al-Hassan anhu was poisoned. So now with the death of Al-Hassan ibn Ali, Mu'awiyah starts to consult the people on who should be the next Khalifa. Because his agreement with Al-Hassan, if Mu'awiyah passes away, Al-Hassan will become the Khalifa. And Allah decrees that Al-Hassan passes away before Mu'awiyah. So he starts to consult people. And the people of Asham say, we want the next Khalifa to be from Bani Umayyah. And why would they say that? Because since the time of Abu Bakr, until that day, only Bani Umayyah were in charge of Asham. And so the people of Asham wanted someone from Bani Umayyah. Because at first, Mu'awiyah was, was the governor of Dimashq only, just Damascus. And Jordan and Palestine and Halab and Hims, all of them had a separate governor. But then Umar anhu saw the ability of Muawiyah. So he gathered all of Asham under him. So the people of Asham suggested Marwan ibn al Hakam and Yazid ibn Muawiyah. Yazid, the son of Muawiyah. So most of the people wanted those two. But then the Banu, Banu Umayyah started to lean towards Yazid. So then Muawiyah anhu announced to let everyone know that they're, going, that they're giving consultation on who should be the next Khalifa. So he starts to send messengers to consult on who should be the next Khalifa. And they all agreed. They agreed to Yazid being the Khalifa. And then they sent to Egypt and other places. And all of them did not oppose the idea that Yazid should be the next Khalifa. So he sent to Medina and there was great opposition in Medina. People did not like the idea. In particular, al Hussein ibn Ali and Abdullah ibn Zubair and Abdullah ibn Abbas and Abdullah ibn Umar and Abdurrahman ibn Abi Bakr. Abdurrahman ibn Abi Bakr was more upset than anyone else. But in the 51st year after the Hijrah, Muawiyah goes out to Hajj and he reads out, he proclaims to people that Yazid is to be the next Khalifa and no one opposed. Everyone agreed. No one opposed Except for those five, Al Hussein ibn Ali and Abdullah ibn Zubair and Abdullah ibn Abbas, Abdullah ibn Umar and Abdurrahman ibn Abi Bakr. These are the only five that did not agree. Everyone else agreed, and all other corners of the Ummah agreed at that time. So Muawiyah radiallahu anhu left them alone. He felt there was no discussion between them, and there was no talk. They see that Yazid should not get the bay'ah, but Muawiyah considers the issue resolved because only five disagree. In the 60th year after the Hijrah, Muawiyah anhu felt that he was close to death. So he started to reinforce the bay'ah to Yazid. He wanted to make sure that people still want the bay'ah to Yazid. So he turns to Iraq and Abdullah ibn Ziyad ibn Abi comes from al-Basra to al-Sham and he goes in to give the bay'ah to Yazid. And everywhere, people start to give bay'ah to Yazid. And all of Medina gave bay'ah, except for Ibn Abbas, and Abdullah ibn Zubair, and Abdullah ibn Umar, and al Hussein ibn Ali. So Muawiyah anhu falls ill in the middle of Rajab, in the 60th year after the Hijrah. At this point, Yazid was away. So he calls up the Haq ibn Qais al-Fihri, and he was the chief of police at the time. And Muslim ibn Uqba, 
this is Muawiyah, he tells them, tell Yazid, look at the people of Iraq, meaning watch the people of Iraq. And if they ask you to remove a governor, every day, do it. So he's telling them, never to anger the people of Iraq. Then he tells them, for to remove a governor is more beloved to me than 100,000 swords unsheathed against you. And look at the people of Asham. Let them be your support. Use them against your enemies. And if you are victorious, then send them back to their place. For if they stay outside of their land, their manners change. And then he continues saying, And I fear not from Quraysh except from three. al Hussein ibn Ali and Abdullah ibn Umar and Abdullah ibn Zubayr. Because you know, these are the people who did not want you to be the Khalif. And then Muawiyah radiallahu anhu passed away. And Yazid led the prayer over him. And Mu'awiyah anhu had done many great things. But he had some mistakes that the scholars have mentioned. And the first of those is that he fought Ali while Ali radiallahu anhu was upon the truth. And the other was that he made the pledge to Yazid. And he made the Khilafah an inheritance after it was Shura. First the Khilafah was through consultation. But now because of what he did radiallahu anhu. It became an inheritance. And we will see from this point on, all the Khulafa would give it to their children. Their children would inherit the Khilaf. So no doubt he was a great companion, radiallahu anhu, and he had done many great things. And amongst the great things that he did was that he narrated 163 ahadith of the Prophet, sallallahu